But here's my biggest question, and please let me know your thoughts down below. Think about it. Shadur Sanders only has 49 days left. Forty-nine days. Let me say that number again. Forty-nine days. Colorado fans, do you hear me? Forty-nine. That's the number. Now I know what all you sitting there saying. Okay, Matt, I hear you. Forty-nine. But what does that number represent? That's a great question, and I have the answer to it. Colorado, they play TCU in 49 days. So therefore, theoretically, or not even theoretically, but just speaking in general, you got 49 days till the rest of the country, the entire world, they either praise you or... They just straight up laugh at you, no in-betweens. Because make no mistakes about it, if Colorado loses that game against TCU, even if it is by a couple of points and they play good, the rest of the country, they're going to point at Coach Prime and laugh. Me personally, do I think that's fair? No, because in reality, if Colorado keeps it to a one-score game, that's a win, at least a moral victory. But, and I got a big but, the rest of the country does not have the same perspective and view on this that I do. It's the harsh reality, and just like they say the truth hurts, a lot of people out here, I'd say 90% of the college football world, or probably 85%, they are rooting against Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, whatever you want to call him. They want to see this man fall flat on his face. They do. And I think most Colorado fans know that and understand it. And I shouldn't have to sit up here and explain as to why people want to see him fail. It's fairly obvious. He's doing something that's never been done before. He's pretty much broadcasting all of his moves. He's got people recording his practices, doing all that stuff. He's big in the social media game. And to go on top of that, this is the biggest thing out of all of them. He's extremely confident and he's not scared to tell you how confident he is. And I wouldn't go as too far as to saying it rubs a lot of people the wrong way, but it definitely rubs some people the wrong way. The bottom line is whether this is right, whether it should be this way, whether it shouldn't be this way, a lot of people want to see this ship crash and burn. And for those of you that are wondering how I feel about this, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you've been keeping up with the channel, you know my view on life. I like to see others do good and bring others up with me. I think there's enough money and success for everyone in this world. I myself, I'm a winner. I'm not scared to say it. I'll tell you straight up. I'm a winner and I like seeing other people win. You'll come to find out in this life, people who are extremely successful, they have that same mentality. They want others to do good. On the flip side, the losers in this life, aka the people that are hating on coach prime they don't want to see other people become successful it is what it is let me put it this way if you're heading on another man you're a loser in my eyes and you want to know how i can prove it i used to think this quote it was corny but it's true when you sit back and think about it somebody once said hey i've never met a hater doing better than me think about it every single one of you watching this you've had somebody hate on you for something and that said person that was hating on you i'm asking you a question were they doing better than you no, I guarantee they're not. Or I guaranteed at the time when they were hating on you, they weren't doing better than you. There's no way. Because people that are winning in this life, aka Coach Prime, they don't even have time. They don't even give time to people that are doing worse than them. They don't have the energy to hate. But you'll come to find out in this life, if you haven't found out already, a lot of people, they're real life haters. I can't relate to it. I want to see everybody succeed. Same thing with Deion Sanders. That's just how I'm wired and that's just how I am. But however, at the end of the day, I got to call it how I see it. If Deion Sanders in this Colorado team goes out there against TCU and gets beat by 40 points, I'm just going to let you know right now, Colorado fans, you probably don't want to watch that video I make after that game. Nobody, and I mean not a single soul, is going to critique and criticize Deion Sanders in Colorado more than me, myself, and I in this upcoming season. I can guarantee you that, but, and I have a really big but, however, at the same time, nobody, and I mean not a single soul, is going to give Deion Sanders in Colorado more credit than me, myself, and I. You see, that's the difference with me. If you've been watching the channel, you know this. Yeah, I critique, I criticize, but also give credit when it's due. And oh yeah, by the way, the last time we talked about Colorado, and I just randomly thought about this, it was like, yeah, 12 or 13 days ago, and I said, hey, we get the video to 1,500 likes, we'll upload another Colorado video the following night. And that video only got to 1,200 likes, and I had a bunch of people tweeting at me and sending me messages on Instagram saying, yo, Matt, how come we didn't get another Colorado video? I don't know if y'all think I'm not a man of my word or a lie, but we didn't hit 1,500 likes. And I hate to be that way, but I'm not going to be a person who says, hey, we hit 1,500 likes, we'll upload a video tomorrow night, we don't hit it, and I still post. No, that's not the bet. That's not the deal. I just thought that was funny because I was like, what are y'all mad about? We didn't hit the like goal. Anyways, though, getting back on track here, let's focus on Colorado and Deion Sanders. 49 days. It seems like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not. Colorado essentially has less than 50 days to prepare for their first football game with this new, I'd say, staff, head coach, and pretty much a new team. 
And you're going to be playing a team that made the national championship. And I already know what everybody's going to run to the comment section and say, well, Matt, this TCU team, they didn't even deserve to be on the championship. They got beat by 60 and they lost a lot of players and blah, 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 blah. Yes, I know this. But the point is, this is a cold hard fact, they made the championship. As bad as TCU looked in that championship, you still got to give them some respect. Don't even try to sit up here and act like they're not a good football team, even with losing some players, because they are. And on the flip side for Colorado, <laughs> you went 1-11. And, and it's very strange to me, because at this current point in time, when you look at the metrics and all the analytics, Analytics, it says that TCU is going to crush Colorado and beat him by 20 plus points, which to me, I would say that's about right. I would favor TCU by about 20, 21 points. However, though, when you get the public perception of this game, most people think if Colorado loses, that's going to be a disappointment. But in reality, if you keep up with college football, Colorado is a underdog and it's not even close. They are a heavy underdog. My point is Colorado is not supposed to win this game, yet if they do lose, there's not going to be a team that gets criticized more after week one. And oh yeah, by the way, I stated this in the video we posted 12 or 13 days ago. If Colorado beats TCU, I'm going to shave my head bald. It's not going to happen. I'm not worried. TCU is going to win the game. The thing with Colorado is, and it's the main reason I'm making this video, 49 days left until the first game, you don't have enough time. You don't have enough time to develop the chemistry. I know it's a bunch of talented guys, but you just need more time. It's going to take at least, in my estimate, and this is on probably the best case and scenario standpoint, you need at least three to four weeks before you really settle in. I do think Colorado's going to turn some heads and win some games they probably shouldn't, but I don't think they're going to hit their strides until week five, week six, and week seven. And I also at the same time think Colorado fans have outlandish expectations. Not all of them, but some of them. Because most of these Colorado fans think they're going to win from the jump, and that's just not going to happen. Let me ask you a question. You really think they're going to be clicking on all cylinders in the first couple of weeks? There's no way you believe that. There's too many new guys, too many new faces, and on top of that, we've never even talked about this aspect of things, they're being hunted. You think all these teams that see Colorado on the schedule, they're happy about everyone putting Colorado on the pedestal? Trust me, they're not. These teams that play Colorado, they want to embarrass them. These teams don't want to get beat by Colorado because they know it's going to be all over social media. They know Deion Sanders, he's going to be talking his stuff, and everybody part of that Colorado program is going to be talking their stuff. I also want you to really think about this. At this current moment of time, as to when I'm speaking, July 15, 2023, TCU is a good football team. We can agree on that. They don't got to be elite. They don't even got to be great. Let's just call them a good football team based off of what they did last year. Vice versa, Colorado, no, they're not even close to average. They're below average. Going back on the other side of the ball with TCU, they know who they are. They got their head coach coming back. Yeah, they got to replace a quarterback, but their system, it's been in place. TCU knows who TCU is. With Colorado, you got all these new players. You got all these new coaches on the staff. They don't know what their identity is. They don't know who they are. When you don't know who you are, you don't know what your strong suit is. And when you don't know what your strong suit is, you can't play towards that. And some people may try to take this as, oh, Matt, you're just hating on Colorado. Why are you hating? Blah, 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 blah. No, I'm not hating. This is reality. Trust me, nobody's praised Colorado more than me the past three to four months. Y'all know I love Deion Sanders. I love what he's done, and I could rant and rave on him all day long, but at the end of the day, I got to call it how I see it. You, and as in you, I'm talking about Colorado, went 1-11 last year. You have a brand new head coach. You have a completely new staff. You have completely new players. And somebody's going to run to the comment section and say, I can already smell you, you bozo. Talking about, oh, Matt, well, these players, they've been practicing together. They're three, four, and five-star recruits. They're going to jail quick. Okay, well, here's my counter-argument to that. Practice and games are completely different. Do you know how many guys I played against in high school that would give me a 40 ball in practice, and then when the game came around, they'd freeze up, and they average 1.4 points per game? If you didn't play sports, I understand it could be a weird concept because it's still the same sport, it's still the same rules, but trust me, it just is. It is different when you go out there and those lights are on and the cameras are on and the fans are out there and that other team, they want to beat you. There's practice players and there's game players. Me, myself, aka White Randy, I was a game player. I was like prime time out there. No lie, that's my seventh grade PE coach. If the ball was thrown near White Randy, he was coming down with it. I even had one play where the defender, it was a comeback route, I go to come back and he's holding my right arm in the ball like I was heading toward the sidelines but the ball was thrown more to the inner side of the field and I had to pin it on his helmet with my left hand and I came down with the catch I gotta find that tape it's somewhere up in my attic but the point is you got game players and you got practice players at the same time though 
I wouldn't be shocked if Colorado beat TCU in the first game. The reason I wouldn't be shocked is because I believe in Deion Sanders that much, and I really love Shadur Sanders' game. A great quarterback at the collegiate level can carry a team to some wins that they have no business winning. And I think Shadur Sanders, he's a lot better than what people give him credit for. But here's my biggest question, and please let me know your thoughts down below. Think about it. Shadur Sanders only has 49 days left. 49 days left of practicing and developing that chemistry with these wide receivers, running backs, and the offensive line. Because yes, you do got to have chemistry with your offensive line. That is important. And you may feel differently about this, and that's totally fine. That's the great part about our channel. We all got different opinions and perspectives. But for me, at least, I just have an extremely hard time seeing Shadur Sanders and these wide receivers and running backs hitting on all cylinders in week one or even week two or week three i really believe there's going to be some bumps in the road but remember this is fine it's year one this is a long-term rebuild and why the offensive side thing is such a big deal is because colorado's defense is not very good they improved it a lot in the offseason and we've talked all about that but it's still not good by any stretch of the imagination what do y'all think i'd say at bare minimum against tcu if colorado wants to have a chance to win the game they gotta score at least what 30 points maybe probably let's say 28 and that's just to have a chance to be in the game here's a fun fact for you last year against tcu colorado gave up 275 not passing yards rushing yards there's a lot of stuff to fix and there's only 49 days left i'm very curious let me know your thoughts on this do you think they'll fix everything and be clicking on all cylinders within these next 50 days or do you think, like me, it's probably going to take until week four, week five? It's a good argument and debate. I can't wait for week one. Let me know your thoughts down below. But I